All right, so it's currently 6.21 p.m. Thursday night. Project's due tomorrow, so let's get this done, boys. All right, so in this thing, I have to explain like four, wait, no, five topics of Asia, so let's get through this mess. Firstly, there's these old dynasties that were in Asia like a long time ago called the Tang and the Song. They did some cool stuff. The Tang made gunpowder during their times to these guys called Taoists. They, they were like, hold up, living forever sounds dope, and they tried to make a live forever potion. And that like fell through. So, the same dynasty that thought they think, oh my god! The same dynasty that thought that they could drink some random liquid and live forever somehow were smart enough to make the compass and able to make a printing thing and make paper. That song dynasty, yeah, they made money, or as they call them, banknotes over in Europe and whatever because they would drink tea with one finger in the air. They also used the compass to find out where they were going. Alright, so next on the list is the Mongol Empire and what they did to make the earth worse. So they created the first international mailing system, paving the way for your UPS guy to peek out your mail. They made this Wan Yuan Empire, which was okay, I guess. They abolished tortures, so that's pretty, yeah, and they took all over China. And China's, like, pretty big. Due to this, they ended up having the largest land empire, like, ever. Now, what did Marco Polo contribute to all this? Well, according to this random website, he traveled, like, f 24 years along the Silk Road, a gigantic road where merchants come through and are like, Yo, man, you want some good? Also, he was the first person to ever travel to Asia, but it was useless back then because there was no sushi or, like, anything, really. His travels also influenced European map makers in the future and Christopher Columbus. But what's the difference between Japanese feudalism and European feudalism? Well, Japanese feudalism did not have a social pyramid like Europe. Instead, these nobles could have power over this big guy on campus, the monarch. But he still has most of the power, so it's chill. Um, also in Japan, warlords, this ended up happening later. Warlords, samurai, emperors, and just like strong last names pretty much ruled equally too. In Europe, the emperors still had all say in power, and during the feudal period of Europe, they were given out land to people in exchange of service. This land was given to anyone, from soldiers to peasants, and it was a main form of currency and status. Finally, the geograph geography of Asia. There's five different... Oh my god, there's five different... There's five different regions of Asia. The mountains, the plateaus, the plains, and deserts. The freshwater environment and the saltwater environment. This continent has a pretty good variety when it comes to geographical diversity. Unlike Antarctica, that's legit just ice. There's all sorts of nasty challenges when trying to get into certain places of Asia. Like, there's hard to pass by mountains. Almost impossible to pass deserts. Water all around. Like, it's for real a challenge. And here's the map. Alright, well that's it for today. Thanks for thanks for watching.